We're gonna see what the first stop is. I'll see y'all when we get to the destination. The bones of our ancestors were brought back from Jamaica and the United States of America. Two of them arrived here in 1998. Crystal was a captive from this same land. She was taken all the way to Jamaica. They got to Jamaica and she wouldn't eat anything. And back in on a hunger strike, she was caught in the act. They needed to force her to eat. And that was when they were using the chisel and hammer method. Mm. Her jaws were tightly closed. She wouldn't accept any food. So they broke the teeth, created a way for the funnel to be placed there. Mm. They dished the food into the funnel and pushed it down the throat. That way she survived for them not to lose their money. But she was a strong woman. If you know what they are, as I mean, African women, their minds, once made up, nothing can be done to change them. She has already made up her mind. Each time she's forced to eat, she waits quietly. After they have all left, she put the fingers in the throat, throw everything up. She continued and died in the process. A dying wish, according to oral history, was to be brought back to the motherland. Centuries later, the bones were brought here in the year 1998, mm. together with the bones of Samuel Carson. Carson was one of the very first group of African Americans to serve in the US Navy. He died and wasn't given a befitting burial. His nephew, Sonny Carson, who was an army officer, decided to bring the bones back. In 1998, he flew with the two bones from Kingston and then United States, New York, to this land. When they got to the airport at Accra, they were picked on a bus. They were going to the dungeon at Cape Coast. They got to the town called Abanze. The road was blocked. The youth told the leaders that none of these ancestors left here on buses. They were not in an airplane. It was at the bottom of a ship that they moved them across oceans to the new world. For you to get them back, you should have shipped their bones. Since they never did, they gave them a boat. They picked them on a the boat across the ocean. They got to the dungeon at Cape Coast. The dark order of no return was shut. How do they get them in? How would they be, be able to move? So, behind the, wall, uh, the door, they stood there, and the youth managed to force the door open to get the bones through it. Got the bones into the dungeon, and they changed that name to a door of return. So when you are at the dungeon, inside the dungeon, and you are going out, it's a door of no return. Mm -hmm. Coming back in, it's a door of uh, return, meaning the gate is now being kept open. From behind, you can now come in. And that's why the year of return was celebrated in 2019. We celebrated the year of return. It was the 400 years of African resiliency. Many Africans from the diaspora came back home. 1619 US Virginia was when the very first documented slave ship docked there. Between 1619 and 2019, we were celebrating it. And then many of the descendants came here together. The Prime Minister of Barbados came with bones of the heart sisters. Sarah sees others use it as tea, they drink it to clean their internal system, get their immune system boosted. In Jamaica or in some part of the Caribbean, many drink this very early in the morning before stepping out. We actually use this for spiritual reasons. It's a plant that fights against evil. It wants nothing evil close to it. So many of us, I personally hang it in my car. I have some in my bag. Wherever I go, there is some close to me. Just to me. You do too. Yeah. So it is a plant that purifies your vicinity. Mm. Some also use it in their bath. With crystal salt, you wash this in the bath and lay in there. Think of all the good things in your life that I mean you want in your life. Manifest everything good. Keep an open mind and they will surprise you. And so today, we inform a lot of people that we are coming to Africa or to Ghana for a vacation. But then I, could, I don't call it a vacation. I call, it, I call it pilgrimage because you are not here on a vacation. You are just returning back home to know your people. So then, since our ancestors walked here, many energies that follow you here are not in favor of you even enjoying your trip. Mm -hmm. Today, this will take them away. So I'm going to just tie this all around your necks. Just add it to your outfit to make it a little bit beautiful. <laughs> yes. And while that is adding beauty to you, uh, to your outfit, it's also protecting you from all the bad energies. And after adding this, I'm going to add the white clay too. The white clay in the olden days, our ancestors used it to fight attacks. They also use it for uh, beauty purposes, all around their faces to heal acne and all that. Today, I'm just going to use it to complement this so that it makes the um, protection a little bit stronger.
begin to do a step of things that were hurting their feet and still continue the walk. You are going to walk at your own pace. Nobody is going to force you to walk fast or even push you or drag you. You are going to walk systematically, calmly, but thinking of your ancestors. You see, I ask my people to ask themselves only one question. And that one question is, if the ancestors who moved out of this land and chased the shackles across oceans to the new world, if they hadn't survived the journey, I'm sorry. Come on. Share the same DNAs with them. For us to do this, we are allowing them by spirit to fill the land once again. They lost this touch, they lost this feel long ago. But we have made that dream of returning back home a realization to them because they can feel it through us. So when we walk, the thoughts of them making the journey for us we bring a lot of things in our mind just bring them all together make sure you connect them all connect the dots and so when we get to the river we can let it all go so don't hold anything back anything that comes to mind if you can bring it together and meditate do so and when we get to the river we let everything out so please come with me Welcome back. My name is Kofi Sko. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have one from the left hand side, my left, your right. Goes from the very far source. It's called the Hotchik River. Literally, it means something that's to The other side of it is called the Nongkonsu, which means the slave's river. In Chi, we say Nongkon. It is a slave. Our ancestors were not allowed to go to the other side of the river because the captains were scared of losing them. The river flows very fast and they were scared the river washed them all away and they would not have anybody to sell. So they restricted them from going there and they kept them on this side. They closed back so gently. So then they kept their ancestors in. They went in there with the chains and shackles. And then a round metal ball added to their ankles to hold them still, preventing them from escaping. While sitting there, they were not allowing them to even get closer to themselves. But they wanted to clean themselves up. Their ancestors were helping each other clean each other. When I get close to you, I wash you. They wash you, you go to the next person. And everybody gets washed by their brothers and sisters. But when they saw them doing that, they thought they were trying to console each other or probably take up the chains to escape. So they got them separated. After the separation, they went to cut the bamboos. Long enough with these bamboos, they were using that as a form of brush to wash them. And that gave them bruises all over their bodies. They brought them out after doing that to them. They lined them up here. Allow them to get dry. After they got dry, they applied shea butter or pumpkin oil on them. For them to look more over there, I know you guys can't see, but the sign says first brandy. And this one says first auction. I'm gonna do it one more time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know.